First of all, I want to welcome you all tonight. Uh, my name is Leslie Wolf Kreutzfeldt. I'm president of Heinlein, which is a communication arm of the China US Chamber of Commerce. Um, we worked uh, together to uh, organize events, um, provide services to both Chinese and US companies, and uh, serve as the bridge uh, for dialogue and business between China and the US. Uh, given that we have a new administration, um, we feel um, that now more than ever our job um, is a very important one and we're excited um, to be talking about real estate because it's a great story. Um, quickly about Highland, uh, we're headquartered in New York City with offices in Shanghai and Beijing, uh, communications arm of the China U.S. Chamber of Commerce. We have five divisions, which include public relations, media, intelligence, services, government relations, and event management. We specialize in real estate, healthcare, clean energy, technology, and finance. And we serve as vital links for CEOs, governments, investors, and consumers in China, US, and around the world. Um, so first, let's look back. Um, 2008, 22, 2016, it was an era with a global outlook, which was multilateral. Um, it almost seems like a golden age where um, countries came together in order to uh, do things. Those times seem to be changing, although we'll see how far it goes. Next slide. Um, some of the... Um, looking back on where we've gone so far. Um, since 2010, nearly 20,000 Chinese EV5 investors generated 9.5 billion in investment capital, resulting in 200,000 jobs. Um, FDI outflow in 2015 was 118 billion. Uh, in the US, it was 22.3 billion investment. Uh, China became the largest buyer of U.S. homes, overtaking Canada. Uh, last year, Chinese buyers invested a record $33 billion in commercial and residential <coughs> property. That was a 53% increase from 2015. So clearly, this is a portrait of strength and a robust um, desire uh, to invest in America. Um, and then if we look from 2009 to 2015, uh, you can see um, that China really uh, takes on an upward uh, mobility that uh, leaves everyone behind uh, in terms of uh, property purchases. Um, next slide. Um, in terms of um, the buying of houses, same thing. China bought the most houses. Average price was 831,000, leaving the others um, down at the bottom. Um, I'm now going to move to what we see in 2017 under the new U.S. president. Um, we think it's going to continue to be a really exciting time, but it's going to be different. It's going to be very transactional and bilateral, and global treaties probably won't uh, be the top of the list. Next slide. Um, trends under the new uh, president, um, where we're seeing a lot of activity uh, based on uh, the last five years is uh, California, Florida, Texas, Arizona, but you know New York um, it seems to be kind of the sleeping giant where a lot of things could be happening um, in the next few years. Next slide. Um, this is another slide about the preferences um, in 2015. Um, again, you can see California, um, uh, cities like uh, San Francisco, uh, Los Angeles, uh, Orange County really are magnets. Um, same. Uh, with um, Seattle, Washington is another hot area. Um, but New York um, is holding steady, and we think that uh, it's an area that we all need to keep our eye on. Uh, next slide. So what do we see happening in 2017? And um, what we see is we have Trump. And yesterday he said, 
I am a total nationalist, but I want trade. And that is kind of, to me, the intriguing kind of subtext of everything he's doing is he is a real estate guy. I mean, that's where he has made his fortune. So I don't see him doing anything that's going to jeopardize real estate. I mean, his family still is heavily involved in real estate. His son-in-law has his own real estate. So. This is an area that I continue to believe will uh, remain steady and probably continue to grow. Um, so what are some trends we're seeing? Um, the new wave of buyers are more in the $1 million and $5 million range. We had the multi-billionaires who have bought places like in this incredible residence. Uh, but the ones who now are coming may, they can buy a one bedroom in this uh, apartment house, but they may also look for less um, opulent uh, digs as well. Um, another thing that we're seeing is that Chinese banks um, are also getting involved um, by providing mortgages, as well as local banks. It used to be that Chinese investors would just bring all of their money in. Due to currency restrictions, um, they're now asking for mortgages. And so um, a lot of banks, including Chinese banks, are getting involved. Um, and then the U.S. will remain a popular destination for Chinese uh, capital. Um, some people Ironically, Chinese feel that Trump administration may make uh, conditions in China more difficult. Therefore, they want to move uh, to safety um, and put their money to work in U.S. real estate. Uh, so these are projected growth figures from uh, the Asia Society um, through 2025. So there may be some pressures uh, in the next couple of years um, can be both in China and America, but the long-term prospects are very bullish. And that's why I think everyone here could continue to find real estate a fascinating subject uh, for investment, for writing about it, because the long-term prognosis is really, really strong. Uh, but I want to also include one cartoon, you know, that illustrates human relations are a crucial component in real estate, and this is you know, the bear saying, it's nice, but it just doesn't say cave to us, you know. So, you know, real estate is one of those intriguing areas where actually there's a human personal component. It's not just buying and selling stocks and, you know, hedging and things like that. It's actually personal, it has to do with where you live, what you like, um, and that's another reason why, you know, first of all, the Chinese uh, continue to be attracted to the New York scene, the luxury, the lifestyle, so we believe that um, they'll continue to look for opportunities here and in the surrounding regions, and that um, it really takes a community like us to um, make it attractive, to explain political changes, so that there is an ongoing dialogue that continues to support growth and um, profit. Um, real estate is a bridge between China and US. And as a communication specialist, I have these following suggestions. Um, commu effective communication is key. Uh, buyers want information and ongoing communication. You know, there'll be maybe one or two people who walk into a, an apartment these days and say, I must have it, here's something. They usually need to know, understand, to see what the advantages are, to understand the community. So communication is key. Uh, the forms of investment will become more creative and diverse, including uh, growing demand for mortgages, private equity funds, etc. Um, we should stay focused on common interests. Investors want to have an emotional connection to their city, home, uh, vendors, neighbors. So to the extent that uh, real estate can actually uh, be a community rather than just an investment, those uh, properties will do especially well. 
uh, watch out for emerging areas to attract Chinese investment, especially near to more mature markets. Uh, so thank you very much. Those are my initial um, comments.